Santeria, also known as Regla de Ocha, La Regla de I4, or Leukemi, is an Afro-American religion of Yoruba origin that developed in Cuba among West African descendants. Santeria is a Spanish word that means the worship of saints. Santeria is influenced by and syncretized with Roman Catholicism. Its sacred language is the Leukemi language, a remnant of Yoruba language that is used in rituals but no longer spoken as a vernacular and mostly not understood by practitioners. History Santeria is a system of beliefs that merges aspects of Yoruba religion brought to the New World by enslaved Yoruba people along with Christianity and the religions of the indigenous peoples of the Americas in addition Cuban spiritism which developed from Allen Kardec spiritism. The Yoruba people carried with them various religious customs, including a trance and divination system for communicating with their ancestors and deities, animal sacrifice, and sacred drumming and dance. The need to preserve their traditions and belief systems in a hostile cultural environment prompted enslaved Africans of various ethnic groups in Cuba, starting from as early as 1515, to merge their customs with aspects of Roman Catholicism. This religious tradition evolved into what is now recognized as Santeria. The colonial period, from the standpoint of enslaved African people, can be defined as a time of perseverance. Their world quickly changed. Tribal kings and their families, politicians, business and community leaders all were enslaved and taken to a foreign region of the world. Religious leaders, their relatives and their followers were no longer free people to worship as they saw fit. Colonial laws criminalized their religion. They were forced to become baptized and worship a god their ancestors had not known who was surrounded by a pantheon of saints. The early concerns during this period seem to have necessitated a need for individual survival under harsh plantation conditions. A sense of hope was sustaining the internal essence of what today is called Santeria, a misnomer and former pejorative for the Cuban expression of the Arisa faith. In the heart of their homeland, the Yoruba people had and still have a complex political and social order. They were a sedentary hoe farming cultural group with specialized labor. Their religion, based on the worship of nature, was renamed and documented by the slave owners. Santeria, a pejorative term that characterizes deviant Catholic forms of worshipping saints, has become a common name for the religion. The term Santero a is used to describe a priest or priestess replacing the traditional term Olorisha as an extension of the deities. The Orishas became known as the saints in image of the Catholic pantheon. In order to preserve and shield mask their traditional beliefs, the Leukemi people syncretized their orichas with Catholic saints. As a consequence, the terms saint and oricha are commonly used interchangeably among practitioners. Spanish colonial planters who saw the enslaved African people celebrating on saints' days did not know that they were actually performing rituals related to orichas, and assumed that they were showing more interest in Catholic saints than in the Christian God. Hence the origin of the term Santeria. The historical veiling of the relationship between Catholic saints and Orichas is compounded by the fact that the vast majority of Santeros in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, are also Roman Catholics, have been baptized, and often require initiates to be baptized in Roman Catholicism as well. The spread of Santeria beyond the Spanish-speaking parts of the Caribbean, including to the United States, was catalyzed by the Cuban Revolution of 1959. In 1974, the Church of Lukumi Babalu I became the first Santeria church in the United States to become officially incorporated. <laughs> Rituals and ceremonies Santeria does not use a central creed for its religious practices, though it is understood in terms of its rituals and ceremonies. These rituals and ceremonies take place in what is known as a house temple or Casa de Santos house of saints, also known as an ile. Most ilés are in the homes of the initiated priests and priestesses. Ile shrines are built, by the priests and priestess, to the different orichas, which creates a space for worship, called an igbodu altar. 
In an Igbodu there is a display of three distinct thrones draped with royal blue, white, and red satin that represent the seats of the queens, kings, and the deified warriors. Each ile is composed of those who occasionally seek guidance from the Orishas, as well as those who are in the process of becoming priests. The many cabaldos and kazas that bridged the 19th and 20th centuries are fondly remembered by contemporary priests as the origins and strongholds of Cuban Lukumi culture and religion. To become a Santero or Santera, priest or priestess of Santeria, the initiator must go through an intensive week long initiation process in which the teaching of the ritual skills and moral behavior occurs informally and non verbally. To begin with, the initiator goes through what is called a cleansing ritual. The initiator's padrino godfather cleanses the head with special herbs and water. The padrino rubs the herbs and water in a specific pattern of movements into the scalp of the head. However, if a person is entering Santeria for the need of healing, they will undergo the rogacion de la cabeza blessing of the head, in which coconut water and cotton are applied on the head to feed it. Once cleansed, there are four major initiation rituals that the initiator will have to undergo, obtaining the elicas beaded necklace, receiving los guerreros the warriors, making ocha saint, and asiento ascending the throne. <laughs> obtaining the elekes The first ritual is known as the acquisition of the beaded necklaces known as alekes. according to De La Torre, the colors and patterns of the beads on the alekes will be those of the oricha that serves as the Iyawos, bride, ruling head and guardian angel and so the first thing that must be done is to determine who the oricha is. The alekes necklace is bathed in a mixture of herbs, sacrificial blood, and other potent substances and given to the initiated. The initiate most often receives the necklace of the five most powerful and popular oricha, as the multicolored beads of the alekes are each patterned for the primary orishas Elugua, Obatalor, Yamea, Chango, and Okan, and they serve as a sacred point of contact with these orishas. When the necklace is received, the initiated must bow over a bathtub and have his, her head washed by the Ola Oricha. The Elikas serves as the sacred banners for the Orishas and act as a sign of the Orichas' presence and protection, however, it must never be worn during a woman's menstruation period, nor during sex, nor when bathing. <laughs> Medio Asiento The second important ritual is known as Medio Asiento, the creation of an image of the Oricha Elegua. The individual will go through a consultation with a Santero, where all the recipient's life, past, present, and future, will be reviewed. During the consultation, the Santero determines which path of Elegua the recipient will receive. Then, based on his findings, he chooses materials that will be used to construct the image of the Elegua, a sculpture that is used to keep evil spirits away from the initiator's home. This ritual is only prepared by men as the Orichas take some of the Santero's manly spirit in the process. <laughs> Los Guerreros The third ritual, known as receiving the warriors, is a ritual where the initiated receives objects from their padrino that represents the warriors, iron tools to represent Ogun, an iron bow and arrow to represent Okosi, and an iron or silver chalice surmounted by a rooster to represent Osun. This ritual begins a formal and lifelong relationship that the initiate will have with these orichas, as the orichas devote their energies to protecting and providing for the initiate on their path. Asiento The last ritual of the initiation process is known as Asiento ascending the throne, and is the most important and the most secretive ritual in Santeria, as it is the ceremony where the Iyawo bride of the Oricha becomes born again into the faith. This ritual is a culmination of the previous rituals, and cannot be made unless the others have been completed. Asiento is a process of purification and divination whereby the initiated becomes like a newborn baby and begins a new life of deeper growth within the faith. <laughs> Post-initiation 
Once the initiation is completed, depending on the individual's house, there is a year-long waiting period, known as a yabaraje, in which the newly appointed priest and priestess can not perform cleansings and other remedies. It is a time where the Iyawo or bride of the Oricha must follow a strict regimen of wearing all white and must avoid physical contact with those who have not been initiated. Once the Ebo del Anno has been completed there will be an end of year ceremony, which will enable the priest or priestess to consult clients, perform cleansings, provide remedies and perform initiations. And according to Gonzalez, they are also regarded as royalty in the religion, as they are considered representatives of the Orichas and are vested with the power to work with the forces of those Orichas in full. With Santeria rituals there are musical ceremonies and prayers that are referred to as Bembe, Toque de Santo, or Tambor. It is a celebration dedicated to an oricha, where the batar drums set of three drums known as the ear the largest drum, a toltele, and a concolo are played in the orichas' honor. Through these sacred drums, messages of worshippers reach the orichas and the orichas respond to their devotees. These drums are used only by men and must always be treated with respect, for example, dancers must never turn their backs towards the drums while dancing, as it is considered disrespectful. Topic. Clergy Priests are commonly known as santeros or oloriches. Once those priests have initiated other priests, they become known as babalorichas, fathers of oricha, for men, and as ayalorichas, mothers of oricha, for women. Priests can commonly be referred to as santeros male and santeris female, and if they function as diviners using cowrie shell divination known as dilogan of the orichas they can be considered ataleros, or if they go through training to become leaders of initiations, obas or oriates. <laughs> Leukemy traditional healing practices Leukemy traditional healing practices are rooted in the spiritual influences of America, Cuba, and West Africa. Having a strong spiritual component, these traditional healing practices also use the pathways of the herbalist, psychologist, ethicist, and that of a respected spiritual medium interceding between God and human beings. Dutois refers to Cuban traditional healing practices as ethnomedicine, which taps on the biodynamic chemical properties of certain plants, from which some commercial drugs were derived, such as the cardiac medications, digitalis, quinine, and carare, chemicals causing neuromuscular paralysis. Dutois categorizes Cuban ethnomedicine as having health specialists, which are El Yerbero the herbalist, El Curandero the cura, El Santero the religious healer, and El Conocedor the botanist. Dutois continues, Cuba is one of the regions in which a great deal of ethnographic and ethnobotanical research has been conducted. Dutois cites the studies of Lydia Cabrera on the religious and healing role of indigenous medicinal plants, and José Gallo on the 900-page compilation of folk medicine, and also mentions that with the 31 herbs prescribed as bronchodilators, only Datura candida was effective, due to its contents of scopolamine and atropine in the leaves. Lemongrass or Cana de Limon is used for low blood pressure and anti-inflammatory effects. Thyme tea and castor oil are used to speed the delivery of babies and the broomweed induces the quick expulsion of the placenta. Herbs are also used to create a trance possession using the hallucinogenic properties of datura metal and datura stramonium both have scopolamine and atropine, causing amnesia. The psychoactive ingredients from the cane toad Bufo marinus, aside from being herbalist, Santeria traditional healing practice has a spiritual aspect. Santeria has a holistic approach, acknowledging the connection with heart, mind, and body. In Santeria, the world flows with the primal life energy called Ashe or growth, the force toward completeness and divinity. Ashe is the current that Santeria initiates channel so that it empowers them to fulfill their path in life, because Ashe is connected to all that has life or exhibits power, Ashe comprises blood, grace, and power. 
When a person is sick, the healer thinks, interprets and reacts, considering the illness not just a physical dysfunction but also an interface with suffering and bad luck in life, believed to be brought on by the activity of bad spirits. Prevalent in Caribbean cultures, Espiritismo is a part of the Latin American traditional healing practice. Dutout reveals that Santeria has a strong element of spiritism. McNeil also concurs that some Santeros have the power to communicate with spirits asking for guidance to improve the situation of a person consulting. However, in general, the Santeros of the Regla de Ocha primarily turn to religion as their practice to address personal challenges and identify means to improve a situation. Many people may go and see Espiritistas who don't see a Santero. Also, Espiritistas may work hand in hand with Santeros. While psychotherapy tends to use mostly allopathic principles, spiritism uses homeopathic principles that aim to reduce the anxiety, or permit the patient to acknowledge pent-up emotions, unexpressed guilt, or repressed behavior through catharsis meant to release emotions the patient may not even be aware of. It is said that healing can occur when the spirit medium assists the sufferer to come into harmony with the spirit world so as to change his or her physical condition, emotions, way of life, or destiny. The reputation of Espiritistas was tinged with negativity, being accused of witchcraft because they deal with health through the unfamiliar paradigm of the spirit world, which was not understood by either the medical doctors or the Catholic priests. Consequently, Espiritistas or traditional healers of Santeria and other Latin American cultures working with healing through the spirit world are attacked as works of the devil from the pulpits of the Catholic churches and labeled as quackery, from the journals of the medical profession. This unique system of knowledge is appreciated as ethnopharmacology or ethnomedicine, aligning and harmonizing with the forces of nature. Practitioners of the Regla de Ocha invoke on the guidance of Orichas. There are three foremost orichas that are predominantly concerned with folk healing, however, other orichas may be invoked to help a person with a specific problem. These main orichas are, Osain, the oricha of the herbs, Babalu Aa, the oricha of contagious and epidemic diseases, and Inle, the patron of physicians. Osain is the patron of curanderos or traditional herbal healers, also called Osainistas. According to De La Torre, Osain is believed to be embodied in the Omero, which is a combination of blood from sacrifices offered during the ceremony and juices extracted from herbs that are sacred to the Orichas with water from rain, rivers, or seas honey, agardiente, powdered eggshell, corojo, and cocoa butter. The forest has everything that would maintain a robust health and keep a person away from malevolence. Thus, Santeria practitioners would agree that no spell will be able to work without the sanction of Osuin, the master herbalist commanding the healing secrets of plant life. Osain is syncretized with Saint Joseph, Saint Benito, or Saint Jerome. Babalu Aa is revered by its victims and survivors like smallpox, leprosy, and skin diseases. Babalu Aa has become the guardian of those with HIV, AIDS. He is syncretized with Saint Lazarus. Inle is the patron of physicians, known as a healer who favors scientific methods. Inle is ranked as one of the orichas that is approached for very specific health issues. Thus, Inle is also known as the protector of homosexuals and feminosexuals. People go to a consulta for many reasons, mainly for health-related issues. Divination is a means that traditional healers utilize to inquire further on the details of a problem. Divination may articulate the origin, cause of the problem, in addition, it may include prescriptions for solutions, suggestions to certain difficulties. Divination establishes an interpretative frame for the situation a person finds himself in. Hence, the Santeros offer cowrie shell divination or other appropriate traditional practices. Rituals, or the reading of Patakas may be done to clarify a problem, of which sometimes the person consulting may not even be aware. Passed orally from many generations, Pataki are parables used by diviners to guide or give insights or moral lessons to a person who came for consultation. The Pataki recited by the Santero corresponds to the number that the Kauri shell divination brings. 
Aside from the use of herbs and divination, the Santeria traditional healing is achieved through rituals that include animal sacrifice, offerings, altar building, music, dance, and possession trance. When the patient is a child, the Santero uses the curative system known as Santigu, which means, to heal by blessing. Perceiving health problems, most Santeros recommend that the client seeks a medical doctor. Parallel to the medical treatment, the patient might be prescribed some herbal teas, cleansing baths, or a special diet from the traditional healing practice. Sometimes, a santero might advise a client to receive omiro, whose efficacy is widely disputed by many in the medical community. An omiro is claimed by believers to be a sacred mixture that is made for specific santeria ceremonies and to embody the oricha ruler of herbs, osain. Most clients who see Santeros would never be told to drink it. Santeria traditional healing is just one of the many traditional healing practices used in Caribbean and Latin American cultures. Traditional healing practices are practiced side by side with mainstream medical practices through the Cuban healthcare system. Traditional healers recognize but do not compete with Western medicine. Topic. Current distribution Santeria is a religion found in Latin America. It is mainly practiced in but not limited to Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Panama, and Colombia. There is also a population who practice it in the United States. In 2001, there were an estimated 22,000 practitioners in the U.S. alone, but the number may be higher as some practitioners may be reluctant to disclose their religion on a government census or to an academic researcher. Of those living in the United States, some are fully committed priests and priestesses, others are godchildren or members of a particular house tradition, and many are non-committal clients seeking help with their everyday problems. A similar religion of Yoruba origin called Candomblé Queto is practiced in Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. This is referred to as parallel religiosity. Topic United States Court rulings In 1993, the issue of animal sacrifice in Santeria was taken to the Supreme Court of the United States in the case of Church of the Lukumi Babalu IV. City of Hialeah. The court ruled that animal cruelty laws targeted specifically at Santeria were unconstitutional. In 2009, legal and religious issues that related to animal sacrifice, animal rights, and freedom of religion were taken to the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit in the case of Jose Merced, President Templo Yoruba Omo Arisha, Texas, Inc., v. City of Ulysses. The court ruled that the Merced case of the freedom of exercise of religion was meritorious and prevailing and that Merced was entitled under the Texas Religious Freedom and Restoration Act to an injunction preventing the city of Euless, Texas, from enforcing its ordinances restricting his religious practices relating to the use of animals, see Tex. CIV. Prac. and Rem. Code section 110.005 a 2 without the court having to reach his claims under the First and Fourteenth Amendments. After the court case was settled, a news article was published in the Dallas Observer documenting the volume and brutality of the animal sacrifices. Topic. See also. Candomblé Queto. If